All right. Hey, everybody. It's Stefan. I'm one of the co-founders of the Head of Growth here at Wondergraph. And I've been messing around with Wondergraph Cloud, and I realized you just deployed your project to Wondergraph Cloud. So what the hell do you do next? Let me show you. I'm going to do a quick demo to show you guys some cool features that we just added and what to do once you deploy your project to Wondergraph Cloud. Let's get started. Let me share my screen. I do have an ultra wide, so you should see my Wondergraph Cloud on the left and empty VS Code ID on the right. All right, so you just deployed your project. If you can see here, I just deployed Next.js demo. Uh, it's one of our templates that we have here. It's a simple Next.js project that takes the SpaceX GraphQL API and displays it on a Next.js front end via JSON RPC. So I just deployed that. And what do I do next? My backend is up and running. You can see here, the Wonder Node is up and running, ready to go. I'm ready to query data if I wanted to. So I can head over to my operations and I can query for the dragons from the SpaceX API. See, my backend is up and running and it's ready to go. But now what? Well, I need a client. And what's super cool about Wondergraph Cloud is now we have a direct integration with Vercel. So if you head over to your settings and you go to integrations, you should see here that I integrated my project already to be synced with my Vercel deployment. So now Wondergraph Cloud will take care of my backend and Vercel will take care of my front end. Let me show you how that works. So if I head over to Vercel, you should see my Next.js getting started guide. And what's super cool, let me put this over here, is they're perfectly in sync. So whatever happens to one happens to the other. Uh, I'll show you this by showing you our real-time analytics. So pay attention, 221. I've been messing with this all day, so that's why it's so high. 222, you saw it when it changed. All right, it's also doing server-side rendering as we're feeding it a subscription. Uh, we're going to do a different uh, thing for the data source. I'm going to actually add a new data source for the project. So you see it just changed. So it sent another request. So this should update. Give it a sec. There we go. So it actually sent two requests. You can also, if I hit it, hit it a couple times and give it a sec, our analytics will update as well. There we go. That's pretty freaking cool. Let's do it one more time because I saw it. Yeah, awesome. All right, so now what I'm going to do is show you guys how they work and, and how they're synced up. But before I do that, I also want to show you something super cool that we added. So now within your operations, you can share your API definition with your teammates. So let's say, you know, you built your Wondergraph backend and you wrote a bunch of operations mutations and you want to show that to your team. Super easy to do. Head over here, click your Postman collection. And this downloads a Postman collection that you can share now with your team. Open up Postman. Right here. All right, let's import a new collection. Uh, my screen might be covering it. One sec. Oh, not like that. So you see right here in the bottom right. So I downloaded the Postman collection and I'm just going to drag that over, put that here, and I'm going to import it. And so now I've imported my collection of queries and mutations. So let's hit it and see the dragons. Very nice. Let's run our operation that we have in TypeScript because in Wondergraph, you can run operations in TypeScript or GraphQL. Let's give it an ID, one. So we actually don't have a user, but let's add one. So we're gonna run a mutation now. We're gonna give it an ID of one, name, Stefan and a bio as co-founder of Wondergraph. Cool, let's send that mutation. So we just added a new user. Now let's do it again. Let's run one. And just like that, you can see how it works. So super cool. You can now share your API definitions really easily by just downloading a Postman collection and sending it to your teammate. All right, so now let's get into the code. Uh, head over to your overview tabs. You can always visit the Git repository here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that uh, and I'm gonna clone into it. Cool, let's see the into it. Next, All right? npm install and npm start. So that's installing. Uh, it's gonna open up locally right here, probably. And I kind of want to go over and explain what the code is doing. So everything in Wondergraph happens in your Wondergraph.config file. We treat APIs as dependencies. So you can see here that we're adding in the SpaceX API as a dependency down here. 
So what we're going to do for this demo is I'm going to actually add in a new API. We're going to write a new operation to query the new API, and then we're going to pipe it through to our front end. We're going to deploy it to cloud, and you're going to see when we deploy it to cloud that it's automatically synced to our front end. This is just opening it up locally, so give it a sec. So this is locally the same thing that we have hosted on for sale, which is live. So super cool. So we can close that for now. And we can keep cloud open over here. And we're actually going to need to head over to Rick and Morty API. And we're going to add in a new data source. So we're going to call this one Rick and Morty. Give it an API namespace, Rick and Morty. Sorry if it's shaking. I'm still getting, my desk is a little wobbly lately. I'm going to grab this GraphQL API. Add that. Cool. You can also introspect and add other data sources such as Apollo Federation, GraphQL, MongoDB, MySQL, OpenAPI specification, REST APIs. That was a mouthful. <laughs> Planet Scale, Postgres, Prisma, SQLite, SQL Server, and much more. So now that we added in a new API, let's add it to our list of APIs as dependencies. Rick and Morty. Cool. So we just added in a new data source. What we want to do now is we want to head over to operations and we want to write a new operation. For this one, we're going to call it episodes.graphql. You can either write um, operations in TypeScript. So you can get a full TRPC experience by just writing TypeScript everywhere. See here, these are written in TypeScript. Super easy. Or you can write them in GraphQL. And so I'm just going to copy over the dragons one because I'm kind of lazy. And we're going to call this one episodes. Give it our API namespace, which is Rick and Morty underscore episodes. Need info and we need the count. Yeah, so this is going to give us the, the count of all the episodes in Rick and Morty. All right, cool. So let's make that change. Let's double check it. So you can always check your wonder node. Heading over to localhost 999-1. And we're going to head to operations under slash episode. Cool. So it's working locally. One. Let's head over to our front end. So we have a simple Next.js front end. Let's head over to index. I don't know why this is not all the way over. And let's, you've seen our front end. So it's really simple, just piping in the data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pipe in the result of our episodes operation. So const episode, so it's actually is equal to use query. Operation name and episode. So this is auto completion. Thank you, Wondergraph. Save that. And if we scroll down here, we'll see that we have this is the result of your episodes operation. And we're just going to put it here. Save that. And if we go locally, it should be good. You can see that's the result of your episodes of operation. Rick and Morty, 51. I actually thought there was more episodes, but I'm kind of surprised. All right, cool. So now here's where the magic happens. Let me move this over here so you guys can see how it happens. Okay. So now I'm going to push up these changes to my branch. Yes. Add in Rick and Morty data source and we're going to merge that and before i do that let me show you this okay so you see deployments the last one is fixed client okay so we just merged our changes to our branch wondergraph cloud is going to pick up on that and it's going to redeploy and it's going to redeploy with those changes adding rick and morty and if you look on vercel the same thing is happening. So these are both in sync, which I think is super cool because Wondergraph Cloud will take care of your back end and you just write your operations and your front end. And when you deploy that, it syncs up with your front end. And so you'll see here once it's ready to go. So let's give that a couple seconds. 
In deployments, yeah, they're relatively quick. So the WonderGraph one is ready to go. So you check out your operations folder, you'll see that we have a new one called episodes. So we're gonna wait for the Vercel deployment to deploy. And you'll see that it works on the Wonder node. So the backend is working for us, which is so cool. And it, same thing, you can also you know download it as a Postman collection and use them. And then now let's wait for the front end to deploy. We can be a little impatient. So you see it's not ready yet. It hasn't it's assigning the domain, so it should be ready in a sec. Let's check deployments, assigning domains. Let's give it a sec. Oh, okay, cool. So now it's ready. So now if we head over to here, we should see our changes on the front end. So how cool is that? Our back end platform, WonderGraph Cloud, is in sync with our front end. And so now I really think this is going to change how full stack development works. Like you just saw how I was able to add in a new API. I was able to write a new operation to it, add it to my front end, and then with a couple clicks, I was able to deploy my back end to the cloud and it's fully in sync with my front end. So if you can't tell already, I'm super excited about that. So that's what you can do with once you get your WonderCraft project up and running. Thank you guys again so much. It's always a blast to show you guys these tutorials and I can't wait to keep making them. Have a good one, guys.